With every new Star Wars book comes a list of smaller fun facts, Easter eggs, references to Star Wars legends, and more. Shadowfall by Alexander Freed is no different, so today I'm going to go through everything I picked out while reading. There will be some spoilers for the book ahead. Early on, Chas tells a story about the outer rim planet Euphornis Minor. It was first created by Jason Fry for his Star Wars Rebels tie-in series of books, Servants of the Empire. It was often confused with Euphornis Major, a prestigious city planet in the core. That same story involves Chas taking a joyride in a Voltec Skyhopper. Voltec is a vehicle manufacturer best known for creating the KT-9 Wasp pod racer piloted by Clegg Holdfast in The Phantom Menace. The 61st Mobile Infantry, also known as Twilight Company, has a significant presence in the campaign to take the planet Troyth. Twilight Company was first created for Alexander Freed's novel Star Wars Battlefront Twilight Company. They appeared in the first Alphabet Squadron book as well. A number of characters from the book also appear, including their captain, who isn't mentioned by name but I expect is still Hazrem Namir, who held the position at the end of Twilight Company. A woman is noted sitting next to the captain wearing a retractable armored mask. I believe she is Brand, yet another character from the same book, and a woman named Vifra. One of Twilight Company's members tells Alphabet Squadron a story of the Battle of Black Tar Cyst, an event from Star Wars Battlefront Twilight Company. But we learn that Erica Quell was also part of the fight back when she was still in the Empire, a fact that she keeps to herself. Their battle on Solist, which is the final battle of the book, is also shared as a story. Shadowwing commandeers a broken-down Star Destroyer from the planet Jarbanov. It's described as being on the outskirts of the Junker systems, but not officially part of the Scrapper Guild. I imagine that means the world is similar in appearance and function to Bracca from Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Erika Quell recalls a mission she took part in to the planet Cathar while she was part of the Empire. That planet was created in Star Wars Legends as the homeworld of the Cathar people, like Juhani from Knights of the Old Republic. It's been mentioned once in canon so far in the Darth Vader comics by Charles Soule. Many squadrons from the first Alphabet Squadron book return, including Meteor, Hale, and Vanguard, but we now know that Vanguard Squadron will be appearing in the upcoming video game Star Wars Squadrons. As New Republic Intelligence hunts for Shadowwing, they receive information from a mole in the Pike Syndicate. It's interesting to see that not only are they still around, but some of them are willing to cooperate with the New Republic. There are also rumors of a repainted ghost tie flying around. This is probably a big stretch, but as far as I can recall, Sabine's modified TIE fighter from Star Wars Rebels was never destroyed. Maybe it's flying around looking for Ezra at this point in time. The Emperor's Messenger from Operation Cinder is still around. Members of Shadowing have begun treating it with reverence, decorating the area around it and praying to it. That's not an Easter egg or anything, but I think it's interesting how some of these pilots are coping with Cinder and cracking under the pressure, looking to some kind of higher power to assure them that what they're doing is right. I did find the timeline of this book to be kind of vague, but there is a mention of Moff Pandion's death and his forces joining with Admiral Ray Sloan, so that at least puts Shadowfall after the events of the book Aftermath, which I believe took place three or so months after the Battle of Endor. It's also mentioned that Coruscant has not yet fallen and that the system is still blockaded, so that likely places Shadowfall around the time of Aftermath Life Debt. That's my best guess for the timeline, about six months after Endor and six months before Jakku. It's said that there is no news coming out of the Anowit sector. That's a reference to the Iron Blockade put in place by Governor Adelhard, which was a major part of the mobile game Star Wars Uprising. And finally, Shadowfall gets word that Ray Sloan has taken control of the fleet and is sending rendezvous coordinates out. At first, I thought that might have meant the coordinates into the Unknown Regions, which happens at the end of Aftermath Empire's End, but I think it's more preparation for the lead-up to the Battle of Jakku. The commanding officer of Squadron 5 of Shadowwing, Tesso Bruch, appears multiple times throughout the book. He first appeared in Jody Hauser's comic TIE Fighter, which was a tie-in story with the first Alphabet Squadron book. Shadowfall is much more connected with that story than the first Alphabet book. Harrison Dooler returns, and while discussing a way to make a mission go easier, she asks if anyone has a Jedi hidden away, and then sadly smiles at her own joke. Fans of Star Wars Rebels obviously know she is referring to Kanan. It's mentioned that when X-Wings have their S-Foils closed, they are unable to fire their weapons. We've seen that isn't always the case in the comics, as well as, again, Star Wars Rebels, but I would just chalk that up to there being different models and variations of X-Wings, or maybe those were specifically modified to do that. The sport Smash Ball is mentioned. It was brought into canon thanks to Alexander Freed and the Rogue One novelization, so he must be a fan, but it was first mentioned in the Legends book Children of the Jedi. 
Vanguard Squadron is mentioned having operations in the Bormia sector, where Shandrilla and the Nadiri dockyards are located. It's possible we could actually see those missions take place in Star Wars Squadrons later this year. The Parwan species is mentioned. They've appeared rarely in Star Wars storytelling, but most notably in the form of the bounty hunter Daron from the Clone Wars. It's said that Shadow Wing's Star Destroyer carried a squadron of TIE training drones. We've seen similar drones in the Star Wars Adventures comics, and we've seen that the First Order had X-Wing training drones in Star Wars Resistance. It's mentioned that there is a Bacta shortage. That makes sense, given all the fighting, but I also think it's interesting that this is a plot point from the old X-Wing books and the Bacta War. A New Republic captain is noted as being an Osioc. That species was created for Beth Revis's book, Rebel Rising, and so far this is only its second appearance. Chas mentions her life growing up on Nar Shadda in the city New Vertica. That location was from Star Wars Legends, appearing in an in-universe Holonet news broadcast. At a certain point, Chas has to go under a pseudonym and chooses Maya Halleck. I imagine that was to honor Jen Erso, who was going by the name Leanna Halleck at the start of Rogue One. Chas joined the Rebellion because of Jen Erso and what she did on Scarif, so I like that she even chooses her fake names based on her idol. The New Republic knows about the Emperor's secret vaults, laboratories, and observatories that were involved in or targeted for destruction in Operation Cinder. Another new location is discovered in the book, but its function is not revealed. Shadow Wing hears a rumor that the New Republic planned to repurpose Hoth as a prison for Imperial Loyalists. As far as I know, that never actually happens, and even Imperial leadership writes it off as highly unlikely. Near the end of the book, Nath receives the Bronze Nova, an award first mentioned in the book Before the Awakening, which was earned by Poe's mother, Shara Bay. Alexander Freed always writes a ton of new and existing planets into his stories. It would be too much to go into all of them, but a few I caught were Andera, Anx Minor, Skako, Yaga Minor, Mon Gaza, and Koru Neomoidia. Also, knowing that the upcoming game Star Wars Squadrons is connected to this book at least through Vanguard Squadron, I have a feeling that in a few months we're going to be catching even more fun little Easter eggs to pull out. But for now, that's everything I caught while reading Shadowfall by Alexander Freed. If you want to check it out for yourself, consider picking it up for free on Audible. Just follow the link in the description or visit www.audibletrial.com slash Star Wars Explained. The audiobook is out right now, and the production value on all the Star Wars books is very high with sound effects and music. It's like listening to a movie. Signing up for an Audible trial will get you a credit for one free book, and you can use it on Shadowfall or just about any Star Wars book you can think of. Or get any book you want. The point is, you get a free book, and you'll be supporting the channel when you do. But that's it for today. If you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and consider checking out our Patreon page. As always, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.